In this episode, I'll take you from the first sketch to first production prototype. This is the TOCO. I'll tell you why I need another CNC machine worth $75,000, why I need a shop expansion. I'll give you a bunch of designer tips. And towards the end of the video, I'll actually reveal the launch date for the TOCO. This is a Randall 1.7. This design is 90 years old. I wouldn't change a thing if it was my design. That's how strongly I feel about the Turco. The whole process started with that first sketch. I was looking back through my process and while we did some sketching in the first episode, I looked through my notebook and actually this sketch, just a few days before we started shooting for this channel, I did this sketch of a rather quick three and a quarter inch flipper. We took some of those ideas to paper in the first episode. Then we started sketching out, retracing the design on my light table. And still, I have no idea how I could be a professional knife designer for 25 years without a light table. Here's pro tip number one. If you want to be relevant in the knife designer's business, buy a light table sketch every single day. I've always said that if you are doing the same thing over and over, you know exactly what you will get more of the same. If you want something different, try something different, work in a different way, do something different with your routines. And that's exactly what I did with the Toco. With the Toco, I introduced a new routine for myself. I sketch every single day for an hour and a half, every single day. I sit down, I turn off the phone, put on some music, and I start sketching. An hour and a half worth of sketching every single day will get you really far. The project we're looking at here, the TOCO, this is the amount of sketches that I've been doing for the TOCO. It's a lot of the same, just tracing the same design over and over with minimal changes. Just small variations, but every single one of them helped me move further to that next sketch. For any design process, you can design everything on paper. You need to feel it. Or you can design everything in CAD, but you need to feel it at some point. You can't just rely on whatever you see on the screen or on paper. Do both. Sketch on paper, sketch in CAD. But it will only take you that far. So what I generally do, once I have the overall design finished, or if I need to test some out something, I will cut it out in cardboard. If you have a laser, well, it's relatively easy. You can use a Stanley knife and some cardboard. Whatever you do, get it to a point where you can actually feel it. Well, this is pretty one dimensional, just thin cardboard, but it will actually show and tell you something about ergonomics. What we're designing here is a hand tool. Ergonomics is super important. Now, when I say ergonomic, it's not where you take a piece of Play-Doh, squeeze it with your hand, and that's an ergonomic handle. No, it's terrible because it will lock your hand into one place. A good ergonomic will allow you to change position of your hands depending on how you use it. Don't make the five finger groove handle. It won't be comfortable. A piece of cardboard will take you that far, but getting something more physical, three dimensional, is crucial for me and my design process. That's where a 3D print comes in super handy. This is just a non-folding solid piece of plastic, but it gives me a tremendous amount of knowledge about this design. This is a rather rough print, but it will still tell me something about dimensions. So this was the first print. On camera, this probably looks the same, but there's just minor changes to the dimensions of the scale, minor changes to the details of the backspacer here. A 3D print will tell you some of those details. I have tons of details in my head 
when I'm working on paper, but actually seeing it in hand and trying out, does it actually feel as good as I envisioned it? That said, nothing, and I mean nothing, beats a prototype. This is as far as we've come with this project so far, and I can only say one thing. I am so incredibly proud of the team effort that went into building this prototype. I handed over the project to my team last week. It's Thursday today. I think I handed it over Tuesday, maybe Wednesday last week, and we have a fully functioning prototype right here. The blade is full thickness. We didn't get to that part yet, but it's a fully functioning lock. It's all the ergonomics is in place. There's still some tweaking of the details, but how about that? One week from sketch, well, one week from drawing to prototype. If that's not fast moving, I don't know what it is. One of the reasons why I established the answer of Denmark shop build is I can do exactly what I want. This is not a production knife. This is not a custom knife. I call it shop build, but what exactly is shop build? I like to call it near custom. I have a strong team behind me. I'm still involved in the process. They do the majority of the work. I still hand sharpen every single blade that comes out of the Enso shop. I do a lot of assembly on these as well. The main reason why I do this rather than just sending all my designs out for production is that I can do stuff that is completely unnecessary. I can do really, really nice detailing that would be stupidly expensive in a full-on production knife, but I can do this because this is in-house production. I can do whatever I want. One detail that I absolutely love about the Toko is how we reduce the weight of the handle. So this is the scale of the Toko. This is milled, rounded, contoured titanium. And then on the inside, we reduce the weight by removing a ton of material from the inside. But this is not just any weight reduction. We call this pattern mud track. And if you look closely, come on, zoom in here, Anas. All the way in, come on, all the way in. I'm there. If you look at the bottom of these weight reduction grooves here, it's actually shaped exactly like the outside of the handle. So the depth is adjusted towards the top of the handle giving you maximum weight reduction. This takes a lot of machine time and you add a lot of programming to the process by doing so. But this just gives that extra level of quality, that extra level of detail that I love. And I'm not going to reveal every single detail of this project yet. You'll see it when you have the knife in your hand. But one of the things that I really love about what I do is leaving small Easter eggs in my knives. So once you have it, I don't necessarily brag about it or tell about it or show pictures of it. But once you have the knife in hand and you examine it, sometimes you will find small details that nobody knew about. Only you just discover it for yourself. And I love that. One detail that I actually want to reveal here on camera. I was a little debating, should I do it, shouldn't I do it? Well, let's do it. It's this tiny little engraving here. This is the Japanese sign for Toko. Toko means everlasting. And I thought that was so fitting to this project and this design that I'm just I couldn't have picked a better name for this project. One of the reasons why I wouldn't change a single thing about the Turco design is that I've been working on it every single day for months, hour and a half each morning for something like two months. I worked on this design. I've never worked that hard into the little details with anything before 
until I worked on the Toco. And that's why I feel that Everlasting is the perfect name for this design. My New Year resolution this year, 2024, was to sketch more. I've been sketching every single day. And I rediscovered that the French curve is the most important design tool when you're a knife designer. The French curves is used to strengthen a design. When you have a rough sketch, you have several lines going on, especially if you follow my most important design tip, and that is sketch with a pen. Forget about erasers. Sketch with a pen, leave the full process on paper. Now you can actually backtrack. You can look at the full process on paper. That's why I spent a full sketching block of paper just working on the toko. I can step back and look at the entire process because I sketch with a pen. When you do sketch with a pencil, you will often leave much more lines on paper than you would in CAD or with a pencil and you would erase stuff. And to strengthen that drawing, you use a set of French curves and then you find the most important line in that sketch and then you highlight it with your pen. You press a little harder and then you get a solid line in the mix of lighter lines. And that's where the French curves come in so handy. Right now we are in the pre-production planning phase of the TOCO. I have used all the experience that I got from making the Aros and I've put all that experience into designing, preparing the design for production and pre-production run. I've taken all the experience that we got from the Aros and putting it into the Toco. Making the Aros created so many bottlenecks along the line. And while working on one bottleneck, changing stuff around, we created other bottlenecks. One of the bottlenecks with the Aros was that we are using 30 minutes per blade, stoning it before tumbling it. And with the Toco, we are moving full into cup grinding. Cup grinding is a production method where you actually use your CNC, your CNC milling machine, but you put a grinding wheel inside of the machine, which sounds horrible. The first time I heard about that process, I, saw, I thought to myself, who in the world would imagine something as stupid as that? Then I visited Chris Reeve factory and I saw it in action and I was sold. That's about a year ago. And right now I'm actually signing a deal for a fourth CNC machine. So this is uh, our Haas VF2SS, a brilliant machine. And if you asked me a week ago, this would be probably my last CNC machine I ever bought. Now fast forward a few days and I called uh, Haas and they said that they have one exactly like it, just waiting for me. And I was like, okay, I need another CNC machine. So I'm hoping that in four or five weeks we'll take delivery on a used but almost new VF2 SS. It's a $75,000 machine. We are expanding the shop once again to fit that machine in, and it will more or less be dedicated to cup wheel grinding. And I am so excited about that. I'm hoping to take delivery of the new Haas machine in four to five weeks. There's so many things that needs to come together before that. What the new machine will also do is remove another bottleneck in the production. The past nine months has mainly been focusing on producing parts for the Aros, and that has created such a bottleneck in machining hours. We simply don't have enough spindle time on the CNC machines, even though we have three. So with the fourth machine that will in daytime be dedicated to cup wheel grinding, we'll see a lot of part making during the nighttime. We only run one shift, but we set up the machines to run at night unmanned. And that has been such a game changer in the shop. So in the afternoon, the team will start the machines with three or four fixtures filled with pre-drilled uh, titanium plates. Next morning, 
side one of say the toko handles will be done it might have taken 14 hours worth of machining but i see it as free time because it's unmanned and it's through the night time so next morning you can you can flip the parts and then do cup grinding all day only to start it in the afternoon and then run side two of a part and i just love the efficiency in that one of the things about making a shop yourself and not just moving into something existent is that when we need more room we'll expand we've done it a few times follow me and i'll show you when we got the new facility here and started building the different rooms this is where the shop ended but we needed more space because well i bought another machine i got the new surface grinder here so we had to build this section of the shop and now we are building another section for the shop is it cumbersome yes is it the most efficient way of running a business probably not but this shop is right across the driveway from my house and I love having everything close to me. I can just walk over here during the weekend or at night and just see if everything is running correctly. So we need more space. So we talked with our landlord and we got another 350 square feet right in here. I'll show you. This is the tumbler room. Well, another machine that I bought because of a project, I bought this machine specifically for the Aros project. And now for the Toko, it will come in so handy. This is where we do all the blade finishes on the Aros blades. And this is where the Toko blade will be finished as well. We do a mix between two different tumbling medias. So what you have here is a ceramic stone this is a rather rough stone and we change it out for a finer mix for the final finish tumbling. So behind this door, we're moving into uncharted waters. This is our landlord's multi-storage space. It's a little bit messy, but uh, let's take a look. This space hopefully will be completely empty in one week's time so we can start building the new walls and building the room, insulating the roof and all that, except we still need to figure out how to get the machine in here. There's a door here. It's not quite tall enough to fit the machine in, but I talked with the house people and they said, well, we might know a few tricks to get it in, but we'll see what will happen. Or the last resort will be to make a big hole in the, in the ceiling and then crane it in at this point i'd rather not really if we can just wheel it in i would much prefer that take a look we already marked where the new wall will be and it will follow along here and it will only be 350 square feet it's still a treasure to get extra space when you run a knife maker shop because space is a premium space is space equals gold this concludes this episode but wait there's more already now we know the launch date for the toko reserve a spot in your calendar for november 16th we're actually moving launch 15 from november 15th to november 16th so we're combining launch 15 with the launch of the toko but wait there's more we actually celebrate the launch of the Togo by having a small reception in the showroom. If you're in driving distance or flying distance from the Enzo headquarters, you're invited. But please, I will need to get some emails from you if you decide to show up just so we have enough food and drinks. But we will celebrate the Togo on November 16th. Please support this channel by hitting like and subscribe and tell a friend you can actually support us right now by visiting the website you can order knives like the aras the toko will be out in about three weeks time but if you can't wait the aras is right there for you now the link is below see you next time